Live and in humongous color from west of the Rockies, it's Let's Make a Bacon with Ace. Another award-winning video coming right at you here at the ranch. So what do we got today? We got a spaceship light that uh, is going to be installed in the bedroom here. I've got the uh, the wire. I just got to turn off the power so I don't get l shocked and uh, get that installed. As part of that process, I'm going to move these little two little turkeys move them to the front of the motorhome and what that will enable is not only for me to install this beautiful uh, unidentified flying object LED light fixture but I will also be able to show you my new setup as far as well it's 95 percent I got to get uh, new grounds for it or, or uh, thicker grounding cable installed but uh, my uh, solar battery power bank of ultimate cosmic power fist ah. and that's coming so uh i'm gonna install this i'll show you this really quick and then after that i'll show you what's underneath the bed <laughs> all right spaceship light is installed so i've definitely come to find these lights very good for my situation uh, reason being is because they, uh, they're they just so efficient. Um, not at the higher settings, that's for sure. When I use the remote, let's see if you can even tell. Well, you, you'll be able to tell, but it's much more apparent. All right, so when I use the remote and I go to regular, I think it's half sun. Boom. All right, so that is, I believe, half sun. Um, that... Yeah, so the first one there, yeah, so this is like 68 watts. This is like 105, so it's like super, I mean, it's daylight, like the brightest day that you could get in this room with, with this being, I mean, the, uh, yeah, the camera doesn't pick it up nearly what it is, but then you press the little moon guy for nighty night time. That brings it down to this, which, for the most part, is totally acceptable. My eyes can get used to it, no problem. And this is the beauty bit. 10 watts. 10 total. That's it. Easy peasy. These guys here, these, they take 5, 6 to 10 watts. Um... I believe with uh, two of them, so with the the one like there, that on, I believe is a, either 10 or 11 watts. And, you know, that's neat and all, but it has to turn on the battery charger to, to uh, you know, keep charging the, to, to float the lead acid battery. And because it has to do that, it takes the 40 watts plus the five or 10 watts. So it's not just five watts, 10 watts of power because it has to use the float sucker. And that thing is just, you know, inefficient as all get out 40, 40 watts of, of power, you know, plus 40, 50 watts of power is what it's taken. Whereas with this, because I'm running AC to it all the time, uh, I can run it on the, the nighty night time and it's only using 10 watts, uh, less than 10 watts really, but, uh, uh, you know, what it registers and what I'm seeing about 10 watts of power. So I'm absolutely in love with these. Um, you know, I don't have to, you know, I can just wire it to the AC. I don't need to have a, a plug, uh, or not a plug, a switch wired up because I've got the remote uh, and, uh, you know, with it being 10 watts, I can run both lights and feel totally comfortable with just, all right, let's, I hate that, got to get the side isn't down, um, but yeah, so I can run 20 watts and I've got uh, very, very nice lighting throughout the home and that is a beautiful thing. So, uh, uh, I gotta move the dogs to show you the solar stuff. I hate moving them because they just, they're so cute. Just 
laying there being good. But I'll move them so I can show you the solder. So be back in a jiff. All right, so this is a lot cleaner in wiring than it looks as far as the, the actual necessary wires. Um, other than two things, the ground, I'm going to change these, uh, the ground out, because I've got a uh, Romax right now. I'm going to change that to a, I think it's called Thin, T-H-N-N, something like that, wire. Um, so I'll be swapping that out with a better ground wire, so that won't look as crazy. And then I've got the, uh, the Ethernet cables, like this yellow one here that's all whatever, and this, this one here that's all just wib wabbed in there and that's going out to this guy here so these two wires the white one and this black one that's all coiled and just going nuts um, those will be cleaned up and will be looking like they should here pretty soon I'm gonna move the uh, uh, the, the unit uh, over to the side of the bed it's got this blue light so that's no no bueno for sleeping so I'll have to figure that out you know, as far as just putting something over it, but, uh, but yeah, so that's the, whew, excuse me, that is the plan for that, so it's not, you know, eventually it'll be cleaned up to where it's not looking so whatever, but without those wires, it does look pretty clean, I got, uh, I got my inverter unit rocking and rolling there, I've got spacers in between both the batteries, each of the batteries, so they're not laying actually right on top of each other, there is an air gap between it, and the same thing with the inverter and the battery below it. There is an air gap in between, just so you know. Um, you know, uh, but yeah, so that's that's what it is. So this is the under, this is this is the monster under the bed. It's a monster, oh, monster. Um, cables are, they're not oversized. They are ridiculously oversized. Um, for what these batteries come with. These batteries are meant to be put in a, a unit, uh, a, a server rack unit, and they got these little bitty cables, these five, five all wire gauge cables going uh, from, <coughs> from there to the bus bar. Whereas with me, I'm not interested in five gauge. Like, and, and, and if you look in the manual, you are not supposed to uh, daisy chain these. Uh, and I've seen videos with the older ones. This is the version two, but I've seen videos of the previous version one to where because there's two lugs on there, people daisy chain them and they daisy chain them with these freaking five gauge wires. I mean, to me, that's just, that's not, that's not safe. This right now, this is ground. This is a ground. Uh, for some reason, in my brain, I'm comfortable with, you know, wor worst case scenario kind of thing, you know, having a little bit thinner wires going to ground, um, you know, but, but man, just ha having, having your full, like, power going, like, daisy chaining, so having, like, three of these and doing the, the, the paralleling or whatever it's called and then connecting it into an inverter holy crap, don't freaking do that. It says in the manual, don't do that. Um, you know, why is it like this? Why are there two lugs? To be honest, I have no freaking clue. Because you're not supposed to daisy chain it. The lug that you can fit on this, the wire lug, like, it's made for these five gauge wires. Why would you have two? Maybe, maybe two, maybe you're doubling up. I guess, you know, that's a possibility. Somebody in the comments, let me know if you've got these batteries and you've got this in a server rack configuration, do you have two wires uh, for each of the terminals, uh, you know, five gauge, because that's, you know, the kind of lugs that it'll fit, go into the bus bar in your server rack? I'd love to know. But with me, take a looky-loo here. Uh, I've got the largest possible lug on that sucker. I don't think that you could go any larger. Um... And this is one, one aught gauge wire. So it is big, big boy, big girl wire, uh, you know, uh, going. And it is like, you, you're not fitting two lugs on there. You're not. You're fitting one, 
and that second screw, the top one, oh yeah, that is that is uh, that is on top of that lug as well. So it is getting held down mainly by the one that it, you know the lugs in um, screw wise, but there is that other one, and that is uh, holding it down a wee bit as well. Um, so yeah, you know, and I'm I'm totally comfortable with that because it's just you know over 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 doing doing over due to do to it um and i'm i'm a massive fan of that uh where are the wires going so the wires are i think they're two two or three feet long and they are going to mondo macho bus bars holy crap bus bars uh epic epicness these guys are one quarter inch thick copper solid copper bus bars um i mean uh no 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 messing about no messing around uh-uh i mean these are full full bore so um so yeah so that's what what i've got i uh i guess i could go a larger gauge from the bus bar to the inverter uh you know that that's possible if I really wanted to go Mondo I guess but to be honest with you uh, looking at you know clearing clearing the way a little bit looking at the the main breaker and yes I will be cleaning the wires up you know for all you you know uh, prudence the safety goats out there I will be cleaning the wires up because I can't oh God, well what if you need to access that and turn it off you got to put your hand through. yeah I'll get it I'll get it yep yep just know that I will but if you take a looky loo here there is not a whole heel of a lot of space like I, I barely torqued that lug down because well I torqued it down but there's not much space and that's one aught gauge if you had a bigger aught gauge wire you know you're really not doing you know a whole lot as far as heat you know I'm not pulling anything though so I guess I you know that's a stupid thing to do oh touch the wire what's your load nothing um but i've got a heat uh a heat thermometer dingus i will be uh using to uh test the heat when i've got some some actual load on it i've got a you know one of the things that i bought with this system not from the same people ah hear that that means we got more sun coming in this is my gauge i can know when sun's coming in i don't have to look out the window all i all i got to do is listen when that sucker ramps up, because I don't have loads, you know, what, if it was load, you know, had loads on it, okay, but when I have no loads on it, and this sucker ramps up, that's, I know I'm getting sun. Um, and there we go. Yeah, you got, I'll just show you. There we go. See, it's funny, because the fans are ahead of this display so you know actually because the fan noise how much it is this is one of two arrays oh can I do that yeah I think that's so then that shows right there but yeah so it goes down but you can hear just from the fan well, I'm not getting as much sun now, so, you know, it's calming down. This is the two together, I believe, the combined. But, yeah, charging up. Um, so, yeah, but these are the but these are the, the batteries. We got, uh, got a breaker box over here. Got a 30, which is uh, going to be, well, it's not going to be. It is connected. I need to, to screw these down. Um, that won't be wonky over by the battery once it's done. That'll be, you know, moved over a little bit and screwed into place. Um, and then this, I've got uh, uh, an individual wire for each of the sockets. This is not a combined dingus. This is two individual sockets, and they are running to two completely separate breakers. Um, and uh, I've got those plugged into the Blue Eddies right now, um, into the Max, and that uh, is uh, charged that to full and uh and yeah good to go uh, but earlier today uh you know when the sun when it, it it's been raining so it took all the smog out of the air 
and then the sun came out, I was at 5,100 watts of solar, and I think that the solar panels are rated with the 22 I've got plugged in right now of like 2,200 watts. So the, the, the panels I have, at least for that you know brief stint in time, I mean, they went hog wild as far as bringing in power. So ultra happy about that. Whether, you know, it could bring in that much power, you know, for a longer period remains to be seen. But uh, I'm doing something with the solar panels with the angle that they are at. Uh, they are at an angle that I have not seen other people put their solar panels. Most people put their solar panels at an angle that is uh, good for summertime or good for a, a spring and fall, but you know, lackluster in the winter and the summer. And mine, mine are at a very steep pitch. Uh, so that's that's the goal to get me through the winter, um, you know, here, because I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be doing summer loving here, you know, trying to, to deal with 100 plus degree heat. Uh, oh, sorry, dogs are, <laughs> dogs are wanting to know what I'm doing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so this is what I got so far. Um, man, I gotta, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. Gotta get the cables off the, yeah. I know. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so, uh, what do, what, what do I have to add to this? Two things. First thing is an input. Got that Holio right there. That's for AC input. Am I going to tie it to the grid? No, I have no grid. There's no grid that I'm tied into. But I'm going to have that to wear on the, the worst of days. If I got a week of just garbage conditions where I'm not bringing in solar, I need to be able to connect it up to a generator to charge these guys up and take full advantage of that generator. A lot of people don't do that. When they hook up generators, they're hooking it up to something like this to where it's putting in you know it's charging at a thousand watts but it's a three thousand watt generator so you know and a slow charge takes forever blah 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 puts hours on your, on your jenny with this i'm going to put another 30 amp connection and a breaker that'll shut off and on that will connect into this and i've got a propane i believe it's a three thousand watt four thousand max propane generators a few years old sportsman um it's a dual fuel but i will never use gas on it ever because uh gas just screws up the system when it's been sitting there i've got a gas generator that runs on gas if i want it that's 2000 watts but um but yeah so that that's uh gonna power this in the the capabilities of this eg4 uh, it gives you the option to change the maximum draw that it's going to take to charge batteries from AC here. So that's uh, how I will regulate how to get or uh, regulate how much it's drawing from that generator so I'm not, you know, flipping the breaker on the generator every time I start it up. But yeah, so I'm going to quit yammering for now. The dogs want to get in here and lay down. Um, I'll show you a, a more completed system here within the next uh, week or two. I've got other stuff to do though. I got cleanup, and I got to make this uh, RV more livable. It's got stuff just uh, transport wise, and uh, you know, so it's just it's full of stuff. I need to get some totes and uh, get it out of here so I can make this more of a livable uh, home instead of half home, half storage unit because I'm not interested in doing that. But, uh, but yeah, so that, but you know, on, on the subject, this is what I'm doing for now. Um, yeah, so you got 1.954, not bad. Oh, see, hear the fans ramping up. It's freaking cool. Freaking cool, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but yeah, self self sufficiency is a, a big thing uh, for me, and that's what uh, the system is all about. So I'm gonna quit yammering. Uh, appreciate everybody watching. Uh, if you like the video, subscribe. If you don't, well then don't. Uh, thumbs up. Ring my bell. Thing, thumbs down if you didn't like it. So on and so forth. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. I'll get this video up today, 
and then I'll give you an update with uh, what I'm doing here with other projects and how I'm uh, rearranging the uh, RV motorhome to be a uh, more of a home and less of a storage unit on my next video is the plan. So uh, much love and hugs and all that good stuff, and you have yourself a fantastic downcast. Goodbye.